Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, this talk is going to be about the biomimetic whisker-based sensor, work which has been done by one of my students, bachelor students, who, can, uh, who couldn't be here to present it, but I'm happy to uh, do it on, on his behalf. Um, well, whisker tactile sensing is a sensory modality which is often found in nature. Um, many animals have those long hairs, for example, at, at both sides of the snouts which they can use for either tactile uh, inspection of the environment or they can do some, some flow sensing with it. For example, uh, pinny pads are uh, known to be able to trace um, roots which have been previously made by fish and then by, by, by um, aquatic animals even after a minute or so, just by feeling or, or perceiving the changes in, in uh, flow in, in the water. Um, they're found on, on many different types of animals, cat-likes, uh, dog-likes, rodents, marine animals, etc. Most of the time they are highly innervated, and so uh, it's assumed that they are able to um, have the capability to discern complex patterns. So they allow to determine object features like uh, size, shape and texture. Um, it can be done without having any mechanical contact with the skin can be an uh, uh, important uh, uh, advantage. And it has been suggested that it also can be used for tactile flow much in the same way as optical flow is used by insects to measure speed. <coughs> of course, we were not the first to work on biomimetic uh, whisker sensors. Here's some, some work by uh, the group of Nita Hackman. Uh, actually, she has been working on, on, um, uh, um, on whiskers for a very long time, both from, let's say, the biological side working with animals, but also with the biomimetic side. And this is an example of a kind of uh, uh, whisker sensor that they made just by, uh, or just for, for finding out what kind of information can be perceived by this kind of uh, sensors. Um, some more recent work is from Paul Divi et al. Um, and and um, um, I think that one of the authors here is also with uh, MIT. But they have concentrated on the whisker shape itself and on the undulations to figure out how that uh, influences the flow sensitivity. More recently, even in 2014, Harada et al. have shown this kind of uh, sensor, which is actually the 2D printed whisker sensor, um, and also meant for flow measurements. Okay, so there have of course been many more uh, papers, uh, but too many to, to uh, all list here. Let's get back to uh, the whisker itself. If you think about a whisker, of course there can be some flexibility in the whisker itself, but overall certainly in a, let's say, static situation, if you load the whisker at a certain distance as with a certain uh, uh, force, then of course there will be a uh, reaction moment due to the, uh, the material on which the whisker is sitting, as well as the reaction force. If you uh, allow the material to, I'd say, to, 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 to uh, change shape a little bit, for example, by having an extension in the, in the translational direction or having a certain rotation, and of course, from these um, changes in, in shape, you can measure the actual force and the distance. And by having both the force and the, um, uh, the moment, you can determine the distance as well. Um, in a dynamic way, of course, it would result in these kind of, of uh, uh, differential equations. But here in experiments that I'm going to show to you, we're only interested or we only work on the, the let's say, the static deformation of the whiskers. This is our 3D sensor design. Um, so it's in, intended to be printed as, as one piece. And the piece has different functionalities. So there's the whisker itself, of course. Then there are two elastic beams, which will allow it to rotate, as well as to be shifted uh, laterally. Um, and then there's two dielectric pads, which we are going to use to have capacitive, capacitive readout. The torsion beams, of course, can be tailored in uh, the way that, uh, um, well, you have, of course, you have the material properties, the shear uh, modulus and the Young's modulus. But you can design, of course, the cross-section, as well as the length of the beams, so you can have an arbitrary ratio of rotational stiffness and the uh, translational stiffness. Um, this is um, the way we have 
uh, implemented our readouts. So this is a kind of a hybrid um, system in which we did not print the uh, actual readouts. So what we are doing here is we have the, let's say, the dialectic parts of the whisker sensor, which are moving into the electrostatic field of a, a capacitor, just by a few coplanar uh, electrodes. And by driving this into the field, we get a change of the capacitor. So if you look a little bit more in, in detail about the system, um, if oh, if these plates would to be would be very thin, then of course, uh, and then if the distance between the, the plates is, is small, then this would be kind of circular um, pattern for the electrical field, and that also means that the further you get away from the center, the smaller, of course, the field will become. So it actually doesn't make much sense to make the, pl the plates very wide. Because it will not add a lot to your present, but it makes more sense to have many different plates or have those interdictated um, uh, kind of, of electrodes. Also, by playing around with the distance between the, the, the electrodes, it also will, of course, influence the, the um, I'd say, the distance over which you can perceive the field in a considerable way. So, in that way, you can basically um, you can adapt the sensitivity of your sensor. Well, this is the um, uh, layout that we made. So um, we have used multiple fingers here, interdictated fingers, to get higher um, higher capacitances. Um, and we have made the distance between the uh, electrodes large enough so that there's a, a, a sufficient range in which we can perceive the um, uh, the changes in, in, the, in the position of the dielectric bands. The two structures here are actually meant for the rotational sensitivity, whereas the structure in the middle here is used for uh, sensing the, the shift of the of the, um, of the whisker that we have the force and the moment um, applied to the whisker. And we have tried to do some modeling on the capacitor readout. Um, so we first tried to have an analytical approximation turned out to give a much too low value for the uh, questions. Then more elaborately, we worked on conformal mapping, but also that gave us actually a very low value for the um, uh, capacitance as compared to both FEM and measurements. And I think the reason for that is that we have structures in which the electrodes are relatively high. So that means that we do not only have those circular shaped electrostatic field lines, but we also have the field lines between the two structures which will be adding considerably to the capacitance. So FEM gave us uh, here a uh, uh, good um, I'd say, uh, image of what's going on with the electric field. So here you see the electric field for different positions of the dielectric part, which is being driven into the field of the capacitor. Um, so here what we did is we, we used only like two electrodes, but using, um, I'd say, uh, the periodic boundary conditions, we were able then to, to make it work for a larger structure. Okay, fabrication and characterization. Uh, we made two versions. One was a uh, ferroclear uh, structure which was jetted in a um, Eden 250. There the layer thickness is uh, 60 micrometers, so you have a high resolution, uh, both in the C direction as well as in the lateral direction where the resolution is uh, uh, given at 45 micrometer by the uh, manufacturer. <coughs> and we also printed the, um, the whisker itself. Uh, but we found out that actually the whisker is uh, quite brittle and then can easily break. So we decided also to have a second um, uh, design where we left out the, uh, the whisker itself just to concentrate on the sensing part. And this one was made by um, an uh, Automaker uh, 2 FEM printer where we used uh, polyelectric acid. So here the resolution is much less, 400 micrometers or so in the lateral direction and 100 micrometers in the layer thickness. But it's without this. Then we did the mechanical uh, uh, measurements and the capacitive measurements on the PLA, for which the uh, Young's model is about uh, 3.5 gigapascal, and the uh, shear model is about 1.2 gigapascal, which is, of course, depending on the printing conditions and depending on the direction in which you use the material. But it gave us uh, rotational spring stiffnesses of about 0.6 to 1.2 newton meter per radian, and a lateral stiffness of about 337 newton per meter. <coughs> 
So what you see here is uh, the mechanical characterization for the lateral displacement. Um, along the horizontal axis, you find the force by which you are loading the sensor. Along the vertical direction, you see the, the shift of, uh, of the, 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 the base part of the whisker. And you see that overall, uh, there is there's some nonlinearity. Uh, but the calculated and the um, uh, measured values are actually uh, quite reasonable in, in um, agreement. So that um, uh, was nice. We didn't do any hysteresis measurements though here. This is a, a graph depicting the uh, rotational measurements. So what you see here along the uh, horizontal line is the torque that we apply to the structure. Along the vertical line, you see the deflection in degrees. And we have done that for several positions where we have mounted uh, a weight. And then uh, basically plot everything in a log log scale. And the two blue lines is the kind of, of uh, um, curve you would expect for the lower and higher values that you may have for printed uh, PLA. And you see that when we are in the um, um, loading phase, actually these lines are reasonably in between those that you can expect. But if you come back in the unloading phase, you see that we have a different curve on the way back, so there's quite a bit of hysteresis here. Um, then, of course, we, uh, we worked on the capacitance uh, readout and uh, wanted to characterize that. We used an impedance measurement uh, 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 system from HP. Um, and what you see here, basically, is when we are driving the structure into the PCB, um, what we find are these curves. So these are many curves, but let me try to explain what you see here. So along the vertical line, you see the or vertical axis, you see the capacitance. Along the horizontal line, you see the separation between the dielectric path and uh, uh, the electrodes of the PCB. Um, and then in um, black here, this is what the FEM calculations predict. What you see in blue is what we find on our way uh, way back. I think that's clear. Um, <coughs> In blue is, is, is when we are, are, are going down with that, whereas in red, what you find is when we go up again. Um, so you see quite a bit of difference between the two, which uh, might be again to the, uh, due to the mechanical hysteresis. But also, you see some weird things which we had in the beginning, so for very small, uh, very small distances. I think what has happened here is that the structure has been driven too hard onto the uh, PCB. And therefore, uh, first again, when, when, you, when you release it again, it takes a while before that really becomes free of the uh, PCB. So I think this is what you see here. And then there's some kind of behavior which we cannot really understand, uh, at least not yet, where we have beyond this point, about 0.45 or so uh, millimeter separation, we see that the capacitance actually is getting a little bit higher again. And uh, at, at this moment in time, we do have no proper uh, explanation for that. It's not seen in the, um, in the FEM calculation, so um, I'm, I'm not, not sure what we see here actually. Okay, so a uh, bit of a discussion. What we measured is a, I think, relatively large uh, change in capacitance. So there was a change of about um, 0.35 picofarad on a base value of 2.1 picofarad gives us a, a, a relative change in capacitance of 1.7, uh, sorry. Um, so that, that's relatively large. Um, so with the current design and the, the current stiffnesses that we have in the structure, we should be able to have a responsivity of about uh, 24, um, uh, factor 24 per newton meter for rotation. But of course, there's to be a lot of work needs to be done uh, we need to work on 3D printing itself. We need to optimize the printing conditions to get the structures which are, are not as brittle. So that you can use the, the whiskers as printed. And maybe we should look at other materials. Uh, of course, we need to integrate the electrical structures and um, work on the hysteresis. On the electronic side, we will need to make a nice interface to the electronic readout and compensate for the hysteresis if possible. Okay, so conclusions. Uh, we have shown a 3D printed risk per inspired structure for QDOF tactile sensing uh, with a um, sample capacitor readout. Um, mechanical measurements show, okay, I'm running out of time here. Okay, let's, um, I think this explains itself. Okay, that's about it. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>